It's a guy jeans podcast. Hey, you guys, welcome to the podcast. This is Guy Jeans, your host. Hey, I want to thank everybody for coming out to the Bart Hall Show in Long Beach. I've been here for the last uh, five days, and uh, uh, my voice is kind of jacked up. It's a little bit, as you guys can see, it's real low from talking to uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people coming by uh, the booth. And uh, I want to thank everybody that's been coming by the booth and uh, thanking me for the podcast, uh, both podcasts, the Kermit Fly Shop podcast, as well as this podcast. And uh, it uh, means a lot, and I really appreciate it. And some of you guys have been telling me some of your stories about that last podcast I did uh, about the book of fear, the gift of fear. So I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, today's guest is Michael Peters, and uh, he's with Long Branch Fly Fishing. And uh, we're going to be talking about all the stuff that he's been doing and guiding and travel trips that he's doing to Alaska and uh, Montana. And he's uh, he's really working it and a uh, really interesting guy. So I'd really, I'm looking forward to talking to him. Um, if you guys haven't, um, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. It uh, helps the podcast grow and if you're listening on uh, itunes or spotify or wherever you guys uh, listen to your podcast you know definitely uh, write a review and uh, it helps the, the podcast grow and uh, get shared and that sort of thing so i really appreciate it you guys and loving doing the podcast so without further ado here is michael peters How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, guy. How are you, man? Good, man. Right on. Thanks for being on my podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, how's the show been for you, man? You know, the show has been great. Um, Thursday was the first day, which is typically a slow day, but mm-hmm. I had steady traffic, you cool. know, all the way through. Uh, Friday was steady all the way through. Saturday started out a little slow, but it was just steady, you know, mm-hmm. the rest of the show. And uh, it, it's been great. I've been meeting a really nice, a real, a lot of really nice, you know, and great yeah. people. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, my voice is kind of jacked up. I've, I've, I don't know how many people do you think you've talked to? Hundreds. I've, I've talked to uh, <laughs> quite a few people. It's crazy, huh? <laughs> it is. All the different people, and and how many different people you meet, and you know, it's cool. Old clients and stuff like that. You know. Yes, it's, absolutely. It's it's a, it's a blast, man. I um, I like doing the um. The Bart Hall show. One is um, there's not a lot of folks that are that are fly fishers, you know, and it's kind of fun because you know introducing people to fly fishing, you know, which you're doing too, and uh, I think it's a really important thing for people like you and I to be at that show to to introduce people to fly fishing, you know, and that's what I want to talk to you about, you know, and all the stuff that you do. Um, well, let's go back a little bit, man. Did you grow up in California? Uh, no, I grew up, well, yeah, I grew up most of my life in California, Uh Um, but I I was actually born, you know, in Texas um, on a military base. Oh, really? Okay. Um, Yeah. And, um, I, uh, I lived in Alabama for about 10 years, you know, of my life. Uh Uh-huh. And, uh, then I I moved to California, you know, when I was 11 years old and, uh, you know, I've been here, you know, for, I'm 52 now. So Uh I've been here now for most of my life, which is where I grew up. Okay. Did you did you do any fishing out there? And, or how did you get into fishing? Well, you know what? My grandfather, you nice. know, he started me uh, fishing. I started fishing when I was about three years old. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, when I was five, and I'd go, you know, stay um, with my grandfather um, over the summers. You know, as a kid, uh-huh. I fished every day, you know, when I was five years old. He had a huge <laughs> pond, just huge. Sweet. And, you know, every day. Um, I get up early and I'd have to, you know, dig. They call them baits, you know, which are night crawlers. Uh-huh. And I get, I had, you'd have to go out early and get some of those, and you'd have to <laughs> do it early in the morning, and uh, you'd have to watch for snakes. You know, I do that. That was in and Alabama. That was in Alabama. So that, that's like, uh, what are those water water moccasins? Water right? moccasins, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, you know, some of the things that I did then, you know, I wouldn't dare let my boys do. You know, go out and fish all day by yourself because I saw water moccasins all the time. But I knew, you know, and it was, you know, he told me, "Hey, watch out for the water moccasins." The uh-huh. Two things that you had to worry about were 
wore the moccasins and fire ants. Oh, okay. Those were the two things. <laughs> and so, and and I, I, you could see the water moccasins slithering, you know, uh-huh. on the water and the fire ants. You just, you just got a dose of those every day. That was just how it was. So, did you, did you get bit by fire ants ever? Oh yeah, uh, I got bit all the time. You'd have these little bumps on your ankles. And, okay. Yeah. So yeah. it was just one of those things that uh, you know. You had to watch out, as they call it, for ant bed. <laughs> um, so what were you guys fishing for? Um, bluegill, um, crappie, catfish, uh-huh. um, and there were some bass in there. Uh-huh. But I found myself every day, you know, as a five-year-old kid, you, he'd come out, my grandfather would come out and feed the fish, and I'd just go out and I'd just stare. I'd just stare at the fish. Every day I'd mm-hmm. fish, you know, with a cane pole, and... Um, I catch fish every single day. I never got sick of it. And then um, he worked on the weekend. I'm sorry, he worked during the weekdays. And when he was off on the weekends, he'd wake me up at 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. And then we'd go fish for catfish, you know, from early morning to about midday every single weekend. And so I never got sick of fishing. And it was just something that I always loved. Yeah. What a cool grandpa, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, you know, like... Um, that's what uh, is so important. There's so many, um, you know, my over the years, so many grandpas that take their kids fishing. How important is that, you know? Oh, yeah. And, I mean, look at it. It's turned you and me both into monsters. Oh. <laughs> Fly fishing <laughs> monsters. Yes, sir. No, you're, you're right. No, that's absolutely happening. Right. Yeah, you know, that's that's cool, man. So did you uh, you fish there, and then you, you came out here to the, to the west, and then did you go to school? Like, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I actually, I came out here to the West, and I actually, um, I did uh, elementary school, um, uh, sixth grade, you know, that's when okay. I started here, and, um, you know, i Was, that, was that in the Los Angeles area? Or? That was actually in the uh, Anaheim area. Oh, okay. And then um, I moved to the Los Angeles area uh, when I was moved, going into ninth grade. So okay. I spent about three years in that area, and then... Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, about three years in that area, and then I moved to the Los Angeles area. You know, okay. going into uh, ninth grade, uh-huh. and um, I've been, you know, in the LA area uh-huh. area ever since. Was that weird, like moving from Alabama to to uh, the LA area, or just in, into California? It was. It was a you transition. Know, for there, you? there was a little transition, you yeah. know, there, and uh, but uh, you know, it all went over, you know, smoothly, uh-huh. and. Um, so, you know, here I am. <laughs> you know, like you were talking earlier about your your kids, you know, um, and when we were kids, yes. you know, like it was more, it, it seemed like it was just like we were just so free, right? Yes. Like, uh, like my parents would be like, all right, come back when the street lights come on or, you know, um, they were they were just so much free. I would, ne- I would never do that with my daughters, right? Yes. But nowadays I would be like, no, you guys, I'm, I want to know where you're at. <laughs> I mean, it's, you're, you're right. I mean, even yeah. yesterday at, at the uh, the show, you know, my boys um, uh-huh. didn't have any um, travel soccer, travel uh-huh. baseball games or club soccer games. So, uh-huh. you know, they were there at the show yesterday. But uh-huh. then I'm like, hey, you, you guys stay together. Go get some food. You know, come back. And we're we're inside. Yeah, you know, yeah. so yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. it's just a completely different world. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. How did you uh, get into fly fishing, or what, how did you get introduced to fly fishing here by somebody? How did that go down? So, you know, with the, the freshwater fishing background, um, I, I went away to college, you know, came uh-huh. back from college, and um, I, um, I started uh, doing a lot of saltwater fishing. Okay. And uh, I'd go on these uh, short range uh, tuna trips, you know, yeah. out of San Diego. Uh-huh. And I, I became um, a charter master um, for a fishing club. And, and so I got to know, you know, captains, you know, yeah. all along the coast. And I would actually uh, book these ocean trips. I'd go out, I'd catch um, uh, albacore. Um, I'd catch bluefin, mm-hmm. I'd catch rockfish, I'd catch everything. And I hit all of the the uh, Channel Islands. You know, I think oh, yeah. the only one I've never been to is um, San Nick, yeah. San Nicholas. But I've hit um, Santa Rosa, I've hit mm-hmm. Santa Cruz, Santa mm-hmm. Barbara, Catalina, uh-huh. uh, San Miguel. Uh-huh. Um, I've hit I've hit them all. Uh-huh. Um, and um, that was just that was huge. And I did that for a while and I was really heavy in the salt. 
Um, mm-hmm. And that was with conventional gear. Mm-hmm. And uh, then um, my son, Michael, who's 16 now, was um, my ex-wife at the time was pregnant with him. And I was on a long, I was going out on a long, well, I was going out on a few day trip. And I thought to myself, wow, what if something happened and I needed to get back? Mm-hmm. And I go, man, I go, this is not cool. Yeah, I yeah. can't turn the, have the captain turn a boat around, you know, everyone yeah. would want to throw me overboard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so after that, I started uh, wanting to go somewhere where I could fish closer. So I started going up to the Sierras uh-huh. and I discovered, you know, that Bishop area, mm-hmm. Bishop Creek, and I started doing that. So then I started transitioning back into fresh water, you know, from salt water. Mm-hmm. And I was, um, you know, at that time using, you know, spinning gear, sure. you know, uh, conventional. And uh, that actually, um, it worked out well. And I loved it. And I yeah. thought it was great. Yeah. But um, I still, you know, had this little nudge in me. I wanted, and I, I went to, um, let's see, I wanted to go to Alaska. Uh-huh. And um, I picked up a fly rod. Yeah. And I didn't know how to cast. You know, I was, I was uh, whipping the rod, and uh-huh. you was could hear the popping noise. So, and I, so was this in Alaska when you picked the rod up, or, no, were you, or down here? This was down here. Okay. You know, before I went. Uh huh. And um, I went, and once I went, um, it's kind of like going to Vegas. You know, a person for the first time. You know, they're they're winning. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't know how to cast really well, but I cast it good enough, and I had a really nice drift, uh-huh. and I had a purple and orange egg sucking leech on, uh-huh. and I caught this 13 pound, you know, coho silver salmon. <laughs> and after that's that, awesome. it just it just ruined me. <laughs> ruined. <laughs> yeah. And that's when the transition began. Uh-huh. Um, and um, I remember the rest of that trip. Um, you know, most of my buddies weren't fly fishermen, and they're going. They're like, dude, you're not catching any fish. We're catching all the fish. Uh-huh. Hey, you got to pull your load. And so I uh, I wanted to learn how to cast. So I came back, and then I went to the Long Beach Casting Club. Mm-hmm. And I, I met uh, a guy named um, Al Ward yeah, yeah. and um, Howard Euler. Yeah. You know, those guys. And they really, you know, they helped me out. And Al Ward, actually, he was just, he's a cool great dude. caster. Yeah. Just, yeah, he's he's a legendary guy. Yeah. Um, and I learned single-handed from him, and I learned two-hand from him, uh-huh. and uh, it was great. So that just um, all started coming together, uh-huh. and um, I think in about 2017, I launched launched the name of my company mm-hmm. because I was always taking my friends out, mm-hmm. and I was pretty much outfitting everyone. I was making sure everyone was catching fish, yeah. and I go, wow. I go, wait a minute, and one day I just sat back, and one of my buddies um, everyone was catching fish, and I go, you know what? I think I'm going to guide. Yeah. Because it just gave me so much peace and, you know, it's happiness just watching everyone. I didn't even have to fish. I was yeah. fishing through them. Right. And I go, Boom. so, yeah, yeah, so that was it. And I just, you know, I polished up on my casting, mm-hmm. um, and then I, you know, polished up on my knowledge, uh-huh. you know, entomology and just, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of things. I was already an outdoorsman and, mm-hmm. you know, well into nature. And then I uh, I went to guide school, you know, mm-hmm. just to put a professional touch, you know, on a lot of things that I already yeah. own. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, here we are, you know, off to the races. Nice, man. <laughs> um, did you, I wanted to go back um, sure. to your college days, too. Yes. Did you, um, were you an athlete or did you just go there just academically? No, you know what? I actually, I went to uh, Ole Miss, uh, University of Mississippi, and I actually got a football scholarship. I thought maybe <laughs> something was going on. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I, I played running back, you know, did and you? kick returner, yes. Uh-huh. And so it, it, it was great. <laughs> did, did you play all like all four years doing that? Or? Um, no, I was I was there for a few years, uh-huh. and uh, I tore tore up my knee my uh-huh. uh, last year. I tore up my ACL, my MCL, uh-huh. and LCL. Um, I just um, we had ran, you know, our forty times. Scouts came to the school, mm-hmm. and uh, it was it was one of those times in my life where I just um, I had a void because a lot of my buddies I watched them go pro. Yeah, and uh, guys that I played with, and uh, my knee was you know tore up, uh-huh. and um, I just had a you know a little transition period. I had to work on that, and yeah. you know one of the things that I sure. always had was fishing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know I could go fishing. Yeah, and, yeah. You know everything uh-huh. would be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
you you get hurt um, in football, man. It's a long time healing, huh? It is. It is you know? a long time healing, and yeah. um, it it was actually um, one of the things that I used. Some of the things that I learned, you know, from that. I actually have a you know really good buddy of mine that played. Um, he played pro ball. He played with the Broncos, you know, as well. And um, he, you know, he was hurt. He had a career-ending injury. And um, I kind of introduced him to the outdoors and, nice. you know, fishing and all of that stuff. And, you know, that helped him, you know, you know, get through it. And he's, he's doing well now. Oh, that's cool, man. Right, what's it like, like you're back, uh, I've always wondered this, so I'm going to ask you this. So, like, you're, let's say you're on the football field. And you said you're a you're a punt returner, a uh, kick returner, kick returner. Okay. Yes. So like, um, you, the you get the ball and you're running and you got all these ginormous dudes wanting to get you. What's that like? Um, I, I, I would say you know in a parallel universe right now, uh-huh. um, I would say it, it's it's sort of like um, the adrenaline that you get, you yeah. know, when you get a real nice fish on yeah. um but right. one of the things that happens is, <laughs> is 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 you're basically it's it's like a uh, fight or flight you know you're running for your life and <laughs> yeah. you are um i mean just everything that you do in practice it takes over yeah and and it's funny that you mentioned this because yesterday in one of my seminars i was talking you know to some people and i was saying hey you know when you go out fishing you want to make sure that you practice, 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 because yeah. that's one of the things, you know, my coaches said, hey, you know, you pray, play like you practice. Like mm-hmm. if you all week long, you don't practice, you get in the game, it's not just going to happen. And the same thing, you know, I was I was talking about um, people who are uh, freshwater fishing and then ocean fishing. So if you're freshwater fishing and you go ocean fishing and that's what you've been doing mm-hmm. prior your first instinct is going to be to trout set. Right, right. And right. I said, hey, maybe you should just take some time, uh-huh. you know, go out and practice strip setting it's because good. it's just something different that you're doing. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's uh, to get back to your question, it's basically it's, it's fight or flight. And you're just, you see all of these things happen, you know, mm-hmm. in front of you so quickly. And your body just reacts to the muscle memory and the things that you've been practicing, uh-huh. and it just—it's just all in there. It's—it's it's internal because it's what you've been putting into your body, and it right. just takes over. Yeah, <laughs> <It's good. laughs> I love it, man. Thanks, so let's sir. talk about your uh, your guide service, Long Branch Fly Fishing. Yes. And how, tell me about that name. I've always wondered what that name. How'd you come up with that name, man? You, you know what? I'm a I'm a big outdoorsman. I'm a big Western guy. I love westerns. Uh-huh. And so, gun smoke is just one of my favorite things in the world to watch. And uh-huh. I even watch it every night now. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> I was I was just trying to think of a name, you know, uh-huh. for my uh, company. Yeah. And um, I was just laying there watching it one day in the Long Branch Saloon, you know, on on, on Gunsmoke. Oh, no way, right? Yeah, Yeah. that's where everything happens, like all kinds of things. Okay. And I was thinking to myself, wow, Long Branch? Hey, that's Uh, where everything happens. Okay. So I I said, you know, Long Branch fly fishing. Uh So then I had this, um, you know, attorney, this patent guy, he searched everything for me. Uh And um, there was not a Long Branch, you know, fly fishing. I know there's a Long Branch, you know, New Jersey and Uh a couple other places. But, you know, he said everything's clear. Nice. You know, so um, I, um, that's that's what it was. And, you know, I um, paid a guy to do some art for me and got all that trademarked. Thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, It wasn't me. I'm not an artist. Yeah. But um, I got all of the rights to it. And and, uh, hence, uh, Long Branch Fly Fishing was born, you know, that name. And uh, here we are. And that was in 2017 you started that? I, I came up with the concept in uh, two seven, 2017, uh-huh. and um, I actually got the logo done in about 2020 okay. uh, when COVID, you okay. know, was, done, um, was in because um, uh, this artist, you know, things were down for him. You know, he needed some work, and uh-huh. so he, he did that for me because he usually worked with, you know, larger companies. Yeah. And uh, it was just, he just had time and, you know, it worked out well. So, you know, I had him dial it up for me and, you know, here we are. <laughs> you said something er- earlier um, that you were up in Alaska and you were watching everybody. Everybody was hooked up and everybody was fishing and you were fishing through them. 
And so I want to tell you something that, uh, you know, all, most good guides say that. Really? Yeah, because it's true. Like, you know, we're not fishing, you know, we're guiding. And, you know, I hear this all the time, you know, uh, when people want to guide for me, you know. They say, well, I'm a great fisherman, you know, I, I could be a great guide, you know, and this and that. And, you know, yeah, that's true, but that's just part of it, you know. And um, I I had a similar story, man, when I first started my, my guide service, man. I, was, I, was gui- I wasn't guiding, but I was with a friend. And it just came over me, too. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not even fishing, man. I'm helping this, this dude catch fish, you know, one of my good friends. And then it dawned on me, like, man, I, I'm, I think I could be a guide or something, you know, and that's exactly what happened to me, man. Wow. And, and you know, it's, it's been 21 years now. You're not gray yet though, bro. I'm gray. Oh, there's, there's grays <laughs> right here. Look at that, man. Hey. It's coming, man. It's coming. <laughs> um, so, so tell me about your guide service and you have, you have a guide service and you have a, a travel business as well. If I'm is that correct, or or like uh, you take or you host trips? I, I host trips. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me, tell tell me about that. Yeah. So um, so locally here, um, I um, I guide to surf. You yeah, know, yeah. so if someone wants to go surf fishing, I can take them out and we'll mm-hmm. fish to surf. Um, I uh, guide on the Lower Owens. You know, yeah. if someone wants to co- go or meet me up there. You know, I can, you know, take them up there. Um, I do. Um, I host charters, you know, over to uh, Catalina Island. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't all, all on the fly, right? Yes, yeah, all, yeah. yeah. Everything that I do is is all on the fly. Yeah. Um, and um, then I actually uh, I have a hosted trip this year uh, to Montana. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be nice. So you know, if, if someone wants to to go there on mm-hmm. a hosted trip, we'll have um, some some guides, you know, on the drift boats, you know, that can yeah. help them out. And um, I just I just love you know helping people you know get yeah. into it uh, casting lessons uh-huh. um, if if someone wants um, you know class you know I had some people hit me up about a class to mm-hmm. learn about you know fishing um, so I was gonna do a, a combo class teach them um, entomology you know mm-hmm. teach them about safety um, talk to them about etiquette. Yeah, um, right. A good one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, just uh give them some casting lessons and you know, yeah. just, just go go from there. Yeah. What is it about guiding that you that you love so much, man? I mean I the thing that I love is is um, are the great people, you know, yeah. that go out with you because one of the things that I've found is it's it's not all about fishing. You know, it's about the experience. Right on. You know, I've I've had people go out with me and um, not catch any fish. Yeah. But they had a great experience and yeah. they had a great time. Nice. And, you know, they go out with me again. Yeah, man. And I'm thinking, hey, that's kind of cool that's because way cool. it's it's one of those things, you know, as a guy that kind of eats up at you, you can't really control it. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, if someone doesn't catch any fish, you really you feel bad. Yeah. And you're like, damn. You know, they, they didn't they yeah. didn't catch anything. Right. And, you know, they still tip you and they still go, mm-hmm. wow. You know, I had a great time. You know, I'll call you. We'll go out again. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Well, you know, you just made it fun for them, and you were trying probably hard, and yeah. just the way it is, you know. Yes. So you do Alaska trips too, right? Yes. Uh, tell tell me about that. Uh so um, I've um, I've been going to Alaska now for I probably say uh, 11, 12 years or so, wow. or somewhere in there. Uh-huh. And I've gone to different areas. And then I also, I started going to this area called Prince of Wales Island. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just kind of learned those river systems, you know, in that area, you know, inside out. And um, I, uh, the owners, you know, of the place that I go to um, are, you know, pretty nice people. Mm-hmm. And so I just you know said you know what i was i was taking people there already and i figured you know what i could guide people here so i got all of my permits um and um guiding paperwork um together with uh u.s forestry you know Mm -hmm. then i had to put them on my you know guides insurance and you know i i got all of my ducks in a row Uh i got that done and uh so you know i i guide there and mm-hmm. I take people, um, and uh, we target different species of salmon. Um, uh, different rivers have different species. You know, mm-hmm. some rivers you're going to get pinks. You're going to get, 
you know, chum. Mm -hmm. um, in some rivers, you're going to get, you know, silvers. Um, and then there's other places you'll get sockeye. And then there's Dolly. <clears throat> there's Dolly Barton, you know, yeah. that are around also. Cool. Um, and uh, then, you know, if, you know, everything works out well with that, we can go out um, uh, with my buddy on this boat and, you know, chase or try and get a halibut. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there different techniques that you're using for the different salmon, or is it all this kind of the same? Or you know, what kind of flies would you use when you're fishing for them? You know, that one fly that uh, that <laughs> stuck me, you know, uh -huh. that egg-sucking leech. Oh, you know, yeah? That, that thing is... That uh, works good? That pretty, yeah. <clears throat> that fly has, has been consistently good, you uh -huh. know, for me in, in various colors. Uh -huh. um, but also I found that some of the other flies that you use for, like, you know, steelhead like intruders. Okay. You know, those also work uh -huh. uh, as well. And I've even, you know, it's funny that you asked that because there was one trip. Uh, one of my buddies went, and uh, we had caught, you know, quite a few fish. And he goes, you know what? Let me try something. So he put on a red woolly bugger. <laughs> he caught a sockeye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and then techniques. I mean, we're using um, single-handed rods. Um, and sometimes we use uh, two-handed rods. You know, uh -huh. sometimes, you know, there's a lot of uh, trees, you know, shrubbery behind us. And uh -huh. then you're just doing a really nice roll cast, you know, yeah. out there and, and you're in the fish. Are you swinging? Or, um, or are you guys drifting those or stripping them or how's that? Uh, we're stripping them. Uh -huh. um, sometimes we're drifting them. And okay. then um, I did a lot of swinging last year. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that was... For, that the, was, for the salmon? For the salmon. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was really effective. That was... It was fun. That's fun, <laughs> man. So are they are they eating it out of uh, spite? Like, are they, are they eating it out of aggression? Or are they actually, like, really trying to eat this thing? Well, you know, one of the things that I, you know, was told um, was that uh, when salmon leave the ocean and they come into fresh water, uh -huh. you know, they're no longer you know feeding yeah uh so i think that it's it's more you know aggression uh -huh. you know or spite but they once they hit the river systems you know they're they're no longer eating because yeah. they're preparing to you know to spawn yeah and they're making the journey you know up the river to you know to spawn so you guys are just like putting that thing in front of them and they're just getting irritated and eat it it yeah it yeah. happens yes yeah. absolutely is there is there a rainbow trout in the mix in with these guys or or steelhead or anything when you guys are fishing or well the steelhead season there is is more in the spring okay um and then there are um some rainbow trout in some trout in some of the uh rivers uh -huh. or some of the other rivers uh -huh. and you do see them you know occasionally yeah you know from time to time um and you've you'll catch them you know by yeah. accident you know sometimes <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's are they usually pretty big too the, the are they in there eating eggs is that what they're doing or well a lot the um the dolly varden are eating you know like uh flesh you know they're oh, eating okay. you like they're eating the decaying carcasses you mm -hmm. know of the salmon yeah and they're eating you know some eggs so a lot of times you can use uh, what's called like flesh patterns, yeah. you know, f to catch, you know, the Dolly Barton, or you can use like a, you know, egg pattern, yeah. you know, um, also. Uh -huh. Interesting. Are you guys uh, traveling around and going to some of the other little rivers and stuff? And are you guys seeing bears as you're up there and doing all that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> so that? we're seeing, uh, we're traveling to uh, different rivers and uh, we're seeing, uh, we are seeing bears, you know, yeah. and one time in particular, um, I had this big bear, you know, pretty much just look at me and she was marking her territory and basically she, she just dared me and I go, hey, it's no problem uh -huh. because one of the things is in nature, you know, it's just respect. Yeah. We're actually going into their homes. Yeah, yeah. You know, the bears, they live there. Yeah. So we're going there to eat. You know, yeah. that's that's their natural habitat. So yeah. yeah, we do see bears, you know, all uh -huh. the time. I usually um I I have my my uh forty four mag, you know, I usually uh -huh. have that with me. Um uh -huh. and I have um everyone else take bear spray. Uh -huh. And uh you know, and, and that's really, really a last resort. And sure. I've never had a situation I mean, if, if anything happened, then the bear spray is, you know, what we're going to go with. Yeah, and yeah. then if it's a, you know, one of those life-threatening situations where there's no other options that, 
then yeah. that's it. But I, I love bears. I actually have a huge, you know, bear tattoo. Oh, you yeah. know, grizzly bear, you know, uh -huh. on my back. This uh -huh. island here does not have grizzly bears, even though I've had oh. grizzly bear account encounters um, in other areas. This island has black bear. Oh, okay. You know, and yeah. but they're still a bear. Sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but they usually, they just want, they just want to eat. You know, yeah. usually they'll eat and um they'll they'll go away you know mm -hmm. they'll get the food and i have some some video of some some bear last year they mm -hmm. were eating you know fishing in front of me uh oh. while i was fishing not too far away yeah but you know you just respect them and um you're not really trying to um interfere with them eating that's the main reason they're they're there they're mm -hmm. hey there's a lot of salmon around they want to eat too yeah it's their house <laughs> we're guests What's the accommodations like where you guys are staying? Like your guests come up and then is the is the food provided um, at the lodge and, or is it a kind of a do-it-yourself thing? No, the food is provided. Mm -hmm. So basically um, individuals would fry, fly in on a Friday. Usually it's uh, from LAX mm -hmm. uh, to Seattle is about two and a half hours. Seattle mm -hmm. to Ketchikan is about 90 minutes. Once you get there, we get on uh one of those uh it's like a float plane mm -hmm. um there's ones uh, that have wheels ones that don't uh, anyway you know we fly into a place called cloak and that's usually about a 23 minute flight okay um once we get there um it's uh within a half hour you know or so driving driving yeah mm -hmm. we're usually fishing you know, because on the way there, on the way there, yeah, awesome. we yeah we you usually get jonesing. there, yeah yeah because one of, yeah we're jonesing <laughs> and one of the things that happens is we have it dialed in. You know, uh -huh. we get there, we'll go get you know spirits, beverages, you know, uh -huh. for the week, some yeah. water, and I just tell everyone to have your waiters ready, and yeah. uh, we're you know we're fi we're jonesing you know the yeah. whole time, and so we get there <laughs> and awesome. we fish all the way to the lodge, and usually when we get there. All of they have they put our food in the refrigerator because they know that and we just have to heat it up. <laughs> they oh, know okay. that we're going to miss dinner. Yeah. yeah. Um, so to answer your question, uh, the accommodations are great. It's usually uh, two people to a uh, two person uh, uh -huh. rooms, uh -huh. two people to a room. And then there's some um, places or uh, spaces that you can have up to five people. Yeah. Uh, they have washers and dryers, you know, so that oh, you wow. can wash and dry your clothes every night. Mm -hmm. uh, the internet service is is spotty. spotty. Yeah, it's, it's it's really spotty, and the service that is provided it's it's a little pricey because uh -huh. you're in a you know the middle yeah. of of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, but they um, make fresh, make hot breakfast every day, and then they put out all of the uh, cold cuts. You know, and they yeah. bake fresh cookies, and you make your lunch every day. Mm -hmm. So you get a hot breakfast. You know, you make your lunch the way that you want with freshly baked cookies, yeah. made with a lot of love. Um, and then you come back in, and um, you know they make a really nice uh, dinner. Nice, and um, it's it's great. Man, that sounds amazing, man. So let's talk about your uh, your hosted. I. I seeing that you've done some hosted trips to like maybe the island channel islands as well right on a fly yeah right? yeah tell, absolutely tell, tell me about that yeah so we'll uh we'll head over uh to catalina and we usually leave out at about uh you know 5 30 a.m usually we'll meet at the, le the landing at about 4 55 uh -huh. you know once everyone is there and usually we take uh limited loads of tent um, so I have all of the equipment, you know, yeah. so if someone doesn't have equipment, ocean equipment, and they're not familiar with it, mm -hmm. uh, they can come on the trip and mm -hmm. I'll provide it to, for them. Also, you know, I try and, you know, give people casting lessons, yeah. you know, before the trip. Sure. Because once we get on the trip, <laughs> hey, it's it's live action, yeah. you know, you're, <laughs> you know, we're coming in hot, you know, so it's uh, one of those situations where. You know, you have to be ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, we, we get on the boats and, um, you know, we have great, great captains. I usually uh, go out with my buddy um, Ryan. He's been a really great friend of mine for, you know, over 20 years. And, and I was fishing with him since he was a, a deckhand. And now he owns boats. Nice. And so I usually go out on the Gale Force or mm -hmm. the Triton because our relationship you know yeah. they go it goes back a long way uh -huh. um so we'll go over to the island and uh deckhands are great the captain captain Jarrett, you know uh -huh. he's great and uh you know they put us on fish uh and when we get there you know i'll sometimes i'll tie flies on the way over so okay. i'll look at the sardines 
I'll look at the anchovies. I'll look at the bait that we have in a bait tank, and uh-huh. I'll tie the flies, uh-huh. just trying to match the hatch, basically. Sure. Um, and uh, when we get over, so we know what size um, uh, flies to use. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that, you know, we just get underway and we go for it. Are you guys doing like a circular, like one person cast on the front of the boat and then you like, if they hook up and then, or if they don't, they strip and then they kind of, everybody kind of rotates kind of a thing? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, yeah. we're doing what's uh, called the, uh, the tuna shuffle. Okay. So uh, everyone, uh, yeah. basically we're facing the stern of the boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you have the, the port side, you have the starboard side. So in the corner, um, and one of the things that I talk about is uh, the safety, you know, yeah, yeah. because you, you never want anyone in the line of fire, you yeah. know, when you're when you're you're casting. So we'll let the first person go out in the corner of the stern and they are stripping all of their line out and then they strip it back into their stripping basket. And then okay. usually I tell them, you know, two false casts, three tops, you got to let it go because that yeah. line is much heavier. Yeah, yeah. You can't carry it. Yeah, yeah. You know, more than three false casts, you're you're gonna lose it. Yeah. And now you're holding everyone up. So yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And are um, are the is the boat moving? And, yes. And so that's why that you can just let the line go out. Well, sometimes we're moving, you know, and yeah. sometimes we're not. Okay. So there there's times where uh, when we're we pull up to a spot, the boat is anchored. Oh, okay. And you cast, you know, to an area, and uh, you're catching, you know, fish. Yeah. Um, and then there's sometimes when um, fishing may be a little tough. Yeah. Um, and so we're moving. Yeah. So it's just, it's just, it's both, but we we try and anchor up. Yeah. You know, a lot. Are they um, chumming it? Yes, chumming they are. The heck they are. Out of it and- yeah, they are. They're throwing out live uh, sardine. Yeah. Uh, live anchovies, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll see fish start coming up. Yeah, what's coming up, and what are you guys catching mostly? Yeah, so uh, first you'll have uh, like calico bass, you know, nice. which is just one of my favorite fish, yeah. you know, in the world to catch. Uh, calico bass come up. Uh, then you'll have bonita, you oh, know, start nice. coming up. Uh, then you'll have barracuda, uh-huh. and it's just like anything. The bigger fish are the smarter fish, and yeah. they sit back. Once all that happens, then the yellowtail will breeze through. Mm-hmm. And they usually come last, so it's like a little, like a you know, you know food, ch- yeah. food food cycle, you know. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, the bigger <laughs> fish, they kind of sit back, uh-huh. and uh, they usually they'll breeze through last, but uh-huh. uh, they kind of wait and see what's <laughs> it's happening. Just, yeah, see what's but the smaller fish come through. Um, but yeah, so we're catching um, calico bass, we're catching you know bonita mm-hmm. um, and barracuda, and then we'll have a shot. You know, at uh, a yellowtail, and um, you know, even with the northern islands, you know, they have shots at uh, white sea bass too. Oh yeah. So it just depends on you know what's going on. Are um, you guys doing uh, different uh, sinking lines? Um, what what kind of lines are you guys using mostly? Yeah, we're using uh, full sink lines. Uh, uh-huh. Sometimes uh, I would say lines from intermediate. Uh-huh. Uh, to uh, maybe seven inches per sec, seven yeah. inches per second, and then I'd say also the uh, the three five seven line. You know, it's it's it has different layers or different yeah. levels that it sinks at. Uh-huh. You know, that's actually really effective too. It just depends on the day, um, yeah. and and how the fish are you know behaving. If they're all at the top, you know that that's that's great. That yeah. intermediate line will work. You yeah. know, pretty well. Yeah. What kind of strips are you guys doing? For, are you doing different strips for different species? Or are you doing longer strips, shorter strips? What, what kind of strips? Are you yeah, doing? for different species, yeah, you're definitely using uh, different strips. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, most of the time you can get away, you know, with a steady strip and you mm-hmm. can, you know, catch a calico. Uh-huh. If you want to get a yellow tail, you're going to have to do a much faster strip. Double. You can, yeah, double strip. You're uh-huh. going to put that rod under your armpit uh-huh. and a double strip, you know, super <laughs> yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're just trying to get that fish to, you know, chase that fly and uh-huh. and just hammer it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds so fun, man. But you know what? It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And the thing that I like to do is 
I like to watch people's faces when they even right. get something like a, a strong bonita, yeah. which sometimes you, you you mistake for a yellowtail bite. Yeah. But I like to watch their faces, and it's that moment. It's like the lights lighting right. up on a Christmas tree when they realize, oh, dude, this wow, a, this, this, this thing's thing has, pulling. Yeah, it's pulling. <laughs> it has some shoulders, and they're like, oh. What size rods are you guys using? Uh, we start out with eight, eight okay. weights, um, okay. and usually we take eight, nine, ten. Okay. So usually we'll start out with eight weights, and uh, if, if the fish are, you know, bigger, yeah. then we may move up to nine, and mm -hmm. if we need, we'll move up to ten. Mm -hmm. But usually we start with an eight weight. Um, okay. Yes. And what about uh, liter and poundage of liters that you guys are using? I usually use uh, about 20-pound test, okay. and it's just straight. Uh -huh. um, I like straight, straight mono? Uh, or fluorocarbon. Okay. Yeah, I like that uh, that P line tactical. Okay. Uh, it's it's really strong, and it's 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 great. You know, it's effective. We catch fish on it. Mm -hmm. So I use that, and I just do a straight leader, maybe six feet. Okay. You know, six between six and nine feet, uh -huh. but usually maybe closer to six and a half, seven. You yeah. know, somewhere in that area, it just varies. That line gets it down quick. It does. Yeah. It does. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Well, if people want to find you, and uh, where, where would they find you at, like website or socials or anything like that? Yeah, socials actually been great. They could find me at um, Long Branch, you know, fly fishing on Instagram, okay. or they could go to longbranchflyfishing.com, dot com. Nice, you know, for my website, um, or just uh, you know, word of mouth. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, uh, so longbranchflyfishing.com. dot com. And then at Long Branch Fly Fishing on uh, Instagram. Yes. What about Facebook or any of those? Or yeah, Facebook, uh, same thing. It's going to okay. be uh, Long Branch, you know, fly yeah. fishing. You know, I I have been uh, watching you for a while, man. And I, I, you know, one of the things about my show, the podcast, is I like having people on that are like you know entrepreneurial in spirit, you know, and yes. you're definitely that, um, and people that are actually like creating. Uh, something out of nothing you know which you have done i admire that um and i really uh uh like what you're doing i like how you're like getting people into the sport um i like how, i like your demeanor you're obviously i can tell by your personality over the years that i've talked to you that your personality is very uh gentle and you're very patient and which is a huge thing when you're guiding right <laughs> well fishing in general but yeah guiding more so yeah you have to be patient because yeah. it's just it comes with the territory <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um and uh so you know i wish you much success success buddy yes sir and um you know thanks for being my podcast oh guy hey man yeah. it's been a pleasure yeah um, i always enjoy coming up to the kern yeah oh yeah um, you know yeah and, you've uh, gone out with me out. with howard right i have yeah, i have yeah, yeah fishing with yeah. you you know hanging out with you yeah um it's, it's great man and i think it's a great thing that you guys are doing you know getting yeah. a lot of women yeah. you know into fishing yeah, you know yeah. up there you know in the current that's just a funny it's crazy I love yeah. it. it is it's, it's crazy, awesome man. it's uh, um i love it too man i mean it's it's unbelievable the amount of uh women that come to the southern zero fly fishers uh women's day it's, yes i mean it's like 60 at a time you know get getting into it and then they continue oh yeah and it's pretty cool no it's it's great i referred a couple of women you know to that event yeah. yesterday i'm gonna stay in touch with them and make sure yeah you know that they attend you know this Ab year absolutely um, man. but uh thanks again guy man i really appreciate you you yeah. having me on and i just i love what you're doing yeah you know up there and and it's 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 branching out you know yeah. down here uh, yeah, you know as well sure. so oh, it's absolutely. definitely great man we got to keep doing different things right yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy thanks man hey thanks guy i appreciate it man you bet with everything going on in the world today right now could be the best time ever to diversify your retirement savings with precious metals like gold and silver i just bought some precious metals myself and i got them from the top rated company gold co they couldn't have made the process easier and their customer service was impeccable. Gold Co. has helped thousands of people just like you and me place over $2.5 in gold and silver. They're rated a by Better Business Bureau. They've earned over 5,000 five-star reviews. They're a seven-time incorporated 5,000 winner. And that's just mentioning a few of their accomplishments. There's plenty more. Right now, for my listeners, they're offering up to $10,000 in bonus silver. You heard that right, up to $10,000 in bonus silver, but only while supplies last. 
Go to goldco.com slash guy to learn more. That's goldco.com slash guy. Diversify your savings with gold and silver today at goldco.com slash guy. It's a Guy Jeans podcast.